Art-Centric Podcast with Rafi and Klee. Hola, you amazing artist. It's Rafi and Klee. And today we're going to talk about some stuff. <laughs> the stuff being how to overcome your fears in your creative endeavors. And um, as we all know, who have done creative endeavors, fear can take many forms. Yes, it can. But um, this particular podcast comes from... Um, a handful of really great questions. And as always, we have our rogue community, our rogue fam of artists here with us who are going to be on the live chat, uh, chiming in with their brilliant comments, maybe even their questions. Yeah. So if you hear us reading uh, comments, we're not just uh, talking to ourselves. We have an amazing community here with us um, that usually adds really great insight to anything that, you know. They we, always do. It's it's not even usually. We're talking about creatives from all over the world. And, uh, you know, everybody has, everybody, anybody that's a creative has a brilliant insight into anything. And I think this is going to be a very interesting conversation because um, fear. Fear, yeah. is, fear. Fear is, I would say, in doing what I do now for a living, fear is most definitely the biggest hurdle that I've had to combat. In totally doing what I do. I would go so far as to say that your career hinges on whether you can master your fears. Yep, indeed. Uh, brilliant. Yes, I am an artistic genius. Yes, Sarah, Sarah. you are. Uh, Timothy's here. Hi, Timothy. Hello. Welcome to the podcast. So the question that kicked off this topic was from our rogue fam, Sarah, who asked, my biggest issue is how to overcome fear. I want to do a second live stream video on YouTube. My first was okay, but I am afraid to do a second one. Plus, blank canvas paranoia. Putting first layer of paint on, maybe it's a self-esteem issue. Once I begin, I'm okay to continue. It's just the fear of beginning, so I don't. Yeah, and that's that's... That's pretty much typical. It's one of the reasons that we have uh, we've come up with for chunking, you know, mm -hmm. just just basically get it started, make it easy for yourself to start and then just get it started and give yourself five minutes, 30 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever it is. And just tell yourself, you know what, I'm just going to do this for 15 minutes. And sometimes it's um, I'm just going to put paint on canvas or I'm just going to put brush to canvas for the next five minutes and I don't know where it's going to go. I'm just going to try and sketch this thing out. I'm just going to make that phone call. Yeah. I'm, I'm just going to put this one bend in this piece of wire. Yeah. It's the same concept as like if you want to establish a practice of like running every day, let's say the biggest hurdle you have to overcome is putting on your running shoes because once you get that far there's a pretty solid chance you're going to go for a run. Yeah. It's like taking that first step. That's kind of how for chunking works. So let's talk about what the, you know, what the reason is that maybe you get frozen. You know, for example, blank canvas. Um, you're sitting there, you're staring at a blank canvas or you're thinking about working on it. Like, what is the reason that sometimes it honestly feels like you're walking through a wall of molasses to get it started, right? Mm -hmm. I would say that... Um, first off, if you're in your head and you're maybe taking on something that you think that is challenging and you're not sure that you could accomplish it um, for whatever reason, I think the moment that you talk yourself out of doing it and you're like, you know what, I'll, I'll get it started tomorrow. And then the next day comes and you're like, you know what, I'll get it started tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And what ends up happening, I think a lot of people underestimate the fact that like habits form extremely easily. Basically, you just have to repeat a habit a few times, a, a single thing a few times, emotionally, especially when you're approaching something, and you will form a habit. Particularly and then, the habits that are comfortable, such yes, as not doing a thing. Like not doing a thing. A lot of times pushing through the comfort zone means that you're doing something that you're used to not doing. Now, for some of us, some of those comfort zones are, you know, things that we've been doing for years. And so, like, you want to push out of the comfort zone. But understanding that the energy that you take into your studio, you are either taking an energy of adventure and honestly, fuck it, 
kind of attitude like where fuck it i'm gonna get this thing started fuck it i'm gonna go forward you know f it i'm gonna do this thing for chunk it um you you really have to have that attitude when you get into studio because if you're avoiding doing something then you're overthinking it you are putting way too much pressure on yourself and you're making it bigger than it really is this goes back to the live stream thing. Like, I understand live streaming. Um, yeah, like Lee says, streaming is scary. Yeah, And streaming, it definitely is at it, first. It definitely is. And and it could be scary. You know, sometimes, like, I actually felt a little bit nervous when we did our Christmas virtual show. Um, a lot of times, depending, you know, I'm we're very comfortable doing a stream like we're doing right now where we're talking um, just off the cuff. Because we do that weekly, Mm -hmm. you know, so like every year and sometimes twice, twice a week. So we're very, very used to it. Um, That's the habit that we form. Now, here's an interesting phenomenon that maybe we can riff on for a minute, right? Something is terrifying to do for the first time, right? Yep. But it can almost be worse to do it for the second time. And here's why. Like you push through the fear and you did the thing, and now you know for sure that it is actually scary because you <laughs> did it and you were scared the whole time, but you got through it. So, like doing it the second time, I feel like sometimes is even harder because you remember how scared you were the first time. Yeah. Right. So, like, like Sarah was saying, like she's done one public live stream and it went well but it was really scary and now she wants to do a second one and it's so now like, and that's the problem is like you walk away from it you know you walk away from it feeling proud of yourself because you were able to accomplish something it's one of the reasons that clea and i whenever we do anything especially if we're doing something new um we have a very we we usually have a discussion about the feelings of said thing that we did um to make sure that we're not walking away telling ourselves a story of like, that was really hard, that sucked, you know, or like, that was so stressful. You do, because like, so for example, like after I gave the opening speech at Rafi's um, Luna Art opening, I was so proud of myself, but I actually said like, I am not in a hurry to ever do, you know, to do that again anytime soon. Um, And so you can really like psych yourself out after the fact of doing a thing. And that could, that could be what Sarah is going through right now. You know, like you did it, you did it, you know, it was scary. Um, uh, you know, and I, and I love that Lee is here because Lee just did a stream. Yeah. Um, and she's like, yeah, that's, that's, it's, it, it could be scary. Yeah. You know, you're there, you're not really sure what you're going to, uh, do. Clean. Yeah. And I have gotten clean. I've gotten comfortable with it because we just talk. And this is this is how we are in real life. So like you meet us and like you my, a lot of times people are like, OK, all right, I got to go now. <laughs> but I know what it feels like to be like getting ready for something and you're almost like hoping for catastrophic equipment failure so that you have a reason and to you, not go live. You or just got to you just got to go through with it. And you got to think to yourself, like, what's the worst that could happen when it comes to streaming? Like, what's the worst that could happen? Um, you say something, you know, wrong or you get your word. You start stuttering. You, you're not sure what to talk about. There's a moment of silence. Equipment gets messed up or whatever. Or someone asks you to show a piece of art that you don't know where it is like I did to Lee. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Lee. <laughs> you handled it really well. Lee yeah. said my camera situation was, was hilarious. hilarious. Yeah, we all survived. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, one of the things that Rafi and I use to lighten the situation when we're nervous is to say, well, if this all goes sideways, that's going to be really good content yeah. for a future video. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or Just think about it. You totally mess it. And then you've got you've got a video or a blog that you could do. How I royally screwed up. My last live stream. Mm -hmm. Everybody loves those videos. Yep. Yeah. (laughs) We all survived, said Lee. Yes. (laughs) Um, Yeah. And another face that this fear can wear is like you've created a masterful piece of art on canvas or whatever your medium is. And you get it done and you're like, you don't even know exactly how you did it. And you don't ever want to try to do it again. You know, 
So you like there that can play into blank canvas phobia. Yeah, blank canvas where you're like, oh, I got this thing so right, I I got it so perfect, and then you get started on something else, and it's almost like you're comparing your brush strokes, you know, and everything to what you finish that you're like really proud of. The truth is everything looks like crap until it looks like something, you know, and it doesn't matter how long you've been doing this. The only people that are able to do those, uh, you know, those quick paintings where it looks like something and you see them on Instagram and like all that stuff Mm -hmm. where they do whatever. um, Those are people that are basically the painting is designed to do that. You know what I mean? Like I've done that at live shows where I knew that I had maybe 15 minutes to do something. Then I went in and I purposefully designed things in a certain way where I could do these like grand gestures. And then all of a sudden it's like a finished piece of art. You know, it's almost like a magic trick more so than anything else. So, but when you're really working on something and you're really going through the layers and the details and you're figuring stuff out, um, everybody, no matter if it's one of the great masters, like, the, the paintings don't look good. Art doesn't look good until it looks good. It's true. You know, so like if you're sitting there and you're like worried that you're going to screw it up and then you do a few brush strokes and then you're like, ah, oh, this is looking like shit and you haven't even gotten anywhere near it being finished. It's like that's that's where you could easily, you know what, I'll just, mm, I'm not, I'm just, um, ah, I'm not going to do it today. You know, I, I need to walk away from that thing. Ah, oh, blah, blah. Yeah. <laughs> Jenny said, it's like that glaucoma air puff eye test where they can in a burst of air into your eye. The first eye goes fine, but then the second the one. The second one, you're like. You jump so hard, you end up on the floor. <laughs> second time is worse. It's exactly like the eye test. I have actually referenced that eye test <laughs> in the same context. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Which, the air puff is horrible. Uh, but it is the second one that gets you because you know how bad the first one. The felt. second one, the second mm-hmm. because the first one, you know, you've got your eye open. Maybe you've done it before, but you forget, you know, and it's like, boom. and then you're like, uh, and then the second one, you're like, I know, I, blinking I know. Yeah. before the eye, before it even the puff happens. It's so hilarious when it's something that you want to do, but it's scary to do it the second or the third or the fifth time. If you can cycle it into your regular schedule of activities, it will help you because it might be the first dozen times you do something that you're going to feel nerves or it might be more of a timeline, you know, like I would say that the live stuff probably scared me for the first year that we did it less and less so every time to the point where it was comfortable. Yeah. Same thing with playing live music. Um, Gosh. Every show, I was trying to get out of every show when it came to music (laughs) for like the first year until it got comfortable. And then, you know, sometimes you step away from a thing for a while and you find that the fear is back yeah, uh, because you've been on pause from it. So it's kind of like establishing a routine that will force you to get comfortable with it if it's something you want to do. And that's the thing to remember is establishing a routine and understanding that like, if you've been telling yourself like, oh, I want to, I want to do this, or I want to work on this particular piece, or I want to do a live stream, or I want to show something in public, or I want to play some music on stage. If you're telling yourself that and then you're, you know, every day you're like, well, you know, I'll look into that tomorrow. Well, I'll look into that tomorrow. And then next thing you know, months have gone by. And essentially what you've done is every time you touch on that subject, you're you're used to just putting it off. Mm -hmm. Right. And that becomes a defense mechanism for yourself that when you go against that routine that you've developed, it becomes even more scary. Right. So at that point, it's almost like there's this point in your brain, this part of your brain that is like, well, you've been putting this off for a reason. Right. It becomes bigger than it needs. And it becomes bigger than it needs to be. It becomes a really, really big deal. And And then you do research. Yeah. And then you do research and then you start to, you know, you do, you get into a research loop and you never come out of it. And then it just makes the whole thing worse. 
No, it, by all means, like, watch, uh, you know, do research. Like, if, you, if there's people out there that have done what you want to do and they do it well, like, watch their videos. Yeah. To, you know, like, get some ideas. Or but, just or just do it. Or just go for it. Or just go for it. <laughs> just go for it knowing that it's going to be a royal beep, you know, and that's fine. And that's fine. That's and, true. If you expect it to be a dumpster fire, then... Anything above that is like I think I think about that because like, you know, I I had when when I started when we started YouTube, I wasn't even sure what we were going to do in the very beginning. It was it was not great. And unfortunately, no, none of those videos have survived because they were on a hard drive. But a lot of it, you know, we were just figuring stuff out and we were filming stuff and we were posting it, Mm -hmm. you know, and then going through the process of like watching it and being like, why do I look so serious? You know, like, why am I, (laughs) why, why am I trying to be cool in this video? Why is my voice so deep? Yeah. Yeah. Clee's (laughs) voice was so, just like, hey, Rafi. It was, I don't know. I don't know what was going on back then or what changed for now, but yeah. But it was, it was like... You know, you go through that process and you're just kind of figuring figuring it out and figuring out like, oh, I like this. Oh, I don't like this. Oh, I, I oh, that's really cool. I want to do more of that. Or, oh, this kind of sucks. I don't want to do this again. Um, for anybody that, uh, you know, any of the rogues on Patreon, if you've been with us since the beginning of Patreon, you know how much Patreon has just changed because, it, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, oh, this would be cool to do this. And then it's like, oh, well, that's that's a lot of work or that's a pain in the butt. So I, I really don't want to do this thing. When someone's like, how do you do Patreon? We're like, we, just I, do it. Whatever you do. <laughs> whatever you decide do to that. do, just do that. Sarah said that I made myself do a second stream today. It was very awkward. It was hard to think about my words. I plan to do them as rambles, but I need more planning. Specific as chapters in a book, what do I say? Like, So, I mean, you got to figure out what you're going to say, Sarah. Um, and... What I would suggest is instead of getting so specific as chapters of a book, write yourself bullet points, you know, Um, Mm -hmm. bullet points and just short little bullet points that you can refer to that is going to trigger you to go down a rabbit hole in a certain way. Like I don't write scripts, uh, scripts or or stuff like that. Um, Clee does when when she's done videos when there's a lot of information that i need to remember (laughs) when there's information that i want to remember that i want to make sure that i touch on in a video i will write some bullet points just to keep me on track but i allow myself to ramble and and go off on tangents and stuff because honestly that's where most most of the when you do that you're you're just being real and and you're just talking off the cuff versus uh, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with with scripting things because, you I know, actually, that's still that's still real. And you're no, I agree with you. I think bullet points are much better in the beginning. Um, like when I did, when I fronted videos, when I did front man or whatever you call that um, ran point, ran point, I was, front man. <laughs> I was worried that I wouldn't be able to remember anything oh. and that my mind would go blank. So like for the Etsy rant video that we did, I, I had it pretty scripted because there was a lot um the peanut gallery uh background commentary is always off the cuff but i have found that it is better to do bullet points just to keep you on track rather than writing out specifically what you think you want to say because honestly it's too much to read and you end up looking rigid and then that can make you nervous and it Um, and it's better to just have the bullet points because like you know you You get to, you talk about the stuff. And then when you're done talking about that, whenever I've done, when we've done talks in public, that's basically what I do because like, I'll talk about a subject and then what happens is you, you know, you might have a brain fart and then you just, (laughs) next thing you know, you're like, I'm not even sure what I'm talking about. Then that way you can refer to your bullet point and just, you know, move forward from there. Um, Again, it's one of those things, you know, like Sarah says, uh, what do I even want to talk about? Why am I doing this? You got to figure that out for yourself. Like, what do you want to talk about? Why are you doing this? That is for, first and foremost, the most important thing. If you plan on putting yourself out there doing video, I mean, it's important if you're putting artwork out there, why am I creating this? Mm-hmm. Why, why am I putting this out there? Um, 
I think with anything that you do, it's very important to set that up for yourself and be very honest and authentic with yourself on why it is that you're doing it because that's what's going to motivate you you know yeah. so we do these videos because we want to connect with people i want to share these things i want to i want to document these conversations i want to record these conversations so th this is the reason that these happen mm -hmm. It's important for you to know that's one of the reasons that like we've heard it suggested that when you're going to film a video or do a live stream, know what the title of it is first, because that'll help keep you on track as far as what the purpose of the video or live stream is. And honestly, that's brilliant advice that I have not followed in the past. Totally, and but it is it is it fantastic. Work. It works really, really well. Even with a blog, right? Like so in, yeah. Yeah. Even with the blog. I'm sorry. Sarah said, I don't want to look stupid. And um, I think it's important to understand that whenever you do anything, that is your fear, right? Mm -hmm. If you're worried about looking stupid, you are going to avoid everything that is fun in life. You just you just are. Also, stupid is relative. Yeah. <laughs> Some people are going to think you look stupid no matter what you do. And some people are going to be really into it. I mean, um, think about that's the why people... I say like, well, we all pretty much look stupid. Yeah. Like <laughs> think about think about the people that have told, you know, that I don't want to watch his videos with a stupid face. So people think well, I have a stupid face. Yeah. And I'm like, whatever. That's your loss. Lee said, I'll just accept I'll look stupid. It takes practice <laughs> and focus on what your purpose for the event is. I mean, that's pretty much our go to. Yeah. M.O. Um, Kelly said, my worst enemy is the stick man in my head. He creates doubt and tries to convince me that when people tell me positive things about my art, that they do so just to be nice and don't mean it. Yeah, that's that's a crock of shit. That is your stick man. Yeah. For the most part, it's been my experience that most people won't say anything unless they genuinely feel yeah. something for the art. It'll be... It, people it's... just aren't, aren't that apt to go out of their way to say things that are not genuine in that way. Yeah, and usually you could tell right away, you know, because it'll be like, oh, well, that's different. Sure, I've heard that. <laughs> and I'm like, you do realize I am taking that as a compliment. And that's fine, right? You can <laughs> you can take the genuine compliments and the disingenuous compliments and pile them all into one heap of like, you know, some people like the art. Some people don't know whether they like the art. Some people yep. are not going to like it. And all of that is totally fine. It's all fine. I mean, and that's the thing. Like people are, Sarah says, or inexpert at speaking, but I am an expert. An you, have a, you have a, a nice face. And who wants to... Okay, I'm going to go on a rant here, Sarah, because we've had this conversation several times. You don't need to be an expert. Nobody is an expert. You know, when it comes down to it, like, especially if you're doing a live stream, you're not an expert at doing a live stream. And, you know, I've done... We've done hundreds of live streams and we're still not experts at doing a live stream. I am not a big fan of the word expert. That's true. I am just not a big fan of the word expert. It puts a lot of expectations out there and there is always something to learn no matter what field you're in. Mm -hmm. Whether you are an artist, whether you are, you know, somebody who does... Yeah, sure, you have, you have a lot of knowledge and you know how to do certain things, but you don't know everything. And that's... That's okay because not any nobody out there knows everything. Also, let me let you in on a little secret that's really not a secret, but maybe we all need a reminder. People like it when you make mistakes. Yeah. It keeps you human. Real. <laughs> it makes you real. That's why like when we make mistakes and stuff, it doesn't believe we made plenty of mistakes on our virtual open studio. Like it's I forgot tough. to tell folks prices. We were kind of clumsy with switching out our. I mean, it I, was just it I was... almost messed up one of the giveaway raffle things like. But that's part of the but it's fun. fun. It's fun. Yeah. You know, it, I, I love what uh, Timothy, what Troy says. Kids look stupid, but they have a blast. And that's that's so true. It I mean, true. and that's I would much rather just have fun, you know, and and take that that whole 
imposter syndrome, stick man, bull crap out of my head. And that's the challenge, really, because, you know, for example, we have we have a live uh, gig uh, uh, that's going to be a music, gig. a music gig that's going to be happening at the end of this month. And, you know, I jumped on the opportunity to be able to do it because that scares me. It, it, it really does scare me. And I my challenge isn't like, OK, well, I'm going to go through with this. My challenge is every time I am talking myself out of it or making myself feel bad or saying like everybody's going to know you suck or blah, 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 is to argue with that voice so that I create the habit of not just allowing the stick man to tell me what my reality is. You know, like I'm going to tell the stick man to go eat a bag and I'm going to be fine. And who cares? You know, like, oh, you're going to mess up. You're going to miss chords. It's not like, no, I won't. I'm going to yep. be perfect. Everything's going to be perfect. No, I'm not going to do that to myself. I'm going to be like, yeah, all right. If I mess up, who cares? If anybody cares, if if somebody gets up and they start booing me, then, I, you know, that I don't give a crap. They could go eat a shirt. You know, like, I just, I don't care. And that's that's the challenge. That's the challenge. Would not, oh, I, you know, I want to be taken seriously. I want people to think that I'm good at this. I want people to, it's like, don't worry about that. That's like, that's almost like being in grade school again. And like, I want, I want kids to like me. I want to be popular. I want to be this. And how torturous it is to live in that place. Mm -hmm. Whereas, you know, I went through a transition in grade school. I wanted I wanted friends and nobody wanted to be my friend. And then at some point during high school, I was like, who cares? I don't give a shit. Yeah. And like, I was so happy. And ironically, I had more friends than I'd ever had because I wasn't worried about making friends. Yeah, definitely. Sean says, be an expert of you and all else will follow. Yes, Sean. Yes. Well said, uh, Jenny said, if I didn't look stupid, I'd just implode. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm stupid, therefore I am. I wear it I wear well. it well. I love that, Jenny. I love you, Jenny. Kelly said, I think once I do art full time, I can tame the stick man or at least build him a cage to lock him up. Kelly, your art is amazing. And mm -hmm. I'm not just telling you that to be nice. Um, you know, and the truth is most people, like Klee said, would be quiet. You know, yeah. it's like, well, if you don't have anything good to say, then don't say anything at all. You know, so it's like, and your art is beautiful, Kelly. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the stick man, he, I don't know what I was going to say. I, I don't know say, either. You, know, you can wipe <laughs> with the stick man. It's, it's, I did. Sarah Let's, says, I'm going to keep doing this till either I ain't afraid or it kills me. It's better than being dead. <laughs> yes, it is. Cheers to that, Sarah. <laughs> I love it. Rachel said, I go live on... TikTok? TikTok. When I'm doing craft uh, for Rug Rack. Rug Rack. Rug... Rug Rat. La I, last year... My words are not working. That's okay. Okay. Last year, I painted a castle playhouse with faux stone. This year, I restuffed his favorite stuffy doggy. Painting seems like a whole different story. It is. You know, and painting, it's... The thing is, when you get on there, if you're doing a live stream, you know, it doesn't mean that you have to finish the project. And if you want to do the kind of live stream where you are going to finish the project, then get it started ahead of time. You know, get it started, mm -hmm. get get the, the tedious details out of the way and get it started ahead of time. If not, just ramble and talk or work on smaller projects. Um, you know... I th people just like watching you be creative. I don't think it really matters what what you're doing as long as you're being creative. And as exhibited by us, you don't even have to work on anything. You can just <laughs> you could <can laughs> go just... live and just sit here and talk and be like blah blah and, blah. And yeah. there will be people that want that too. That want that interaction and want to just talk about topics. Um, so whatever is right for you, I'm not. Well, I certainly, there's a lot of stuff that I would not be able to do with jewelry and do a live stream because it involves hammering and dremeling and drilling yeah. and polishing, all very loud things. So whatever your flavor is, and that can change over time, 
just do it and start off little and then just like build your build up your comfort levels from there. Yeah. Clover said, I somehow landed my second con ever at one of the biggest events in my area. It's SAC Anime, a huge three-day event that hosts over 10,000 people. I'm so scared, and that's what makes it so great. Yes, Clover. If you're scared and still doing the thing, you're growing. Exactly. And that's exactly. it. That, I mean, really? That, really? that really encompasses it. Like, you're... You're going to be scared to do things that you are not used to doing. And the only real way to get past it is to do them yeah. multiple times. Multiple times. Uh, I go by Sean now. Oh, it's Shawan. Shawan. Hey, Sean. Shawan. Uh, Sean. Yes. <laughs> Just Hi, Sean. read that. Uh, <laughs> Kelly said, even though I manage to not care about how people view me physically as a person when it comes to what a I create. I haven't quite got a handle on it. You will. You and will. You will. It just you will. Time. I, I, I have a handle on it when it comes to art, right? Honestly, it's some, it's somebody could barge into my studio and be like, everything you create is shit, you know? Like, and I would be like, whatever. Okay. Like, I just, I don't care. When it comes to music, like, that's where the stick man uh, has, yeah. when it comes to writing, even writing, I've I've written three books and I I still like I'm like uh, you know scared of that bad review yeah scared of yeah. that bad review and that's where like my example of like even being on hiatus from something like I played music just about every weekend for a solid like bunch of years and so by the end of it like I it didn't phase me to get up on stage and play music but then I stepped away from playing live shows for another handful of years. And now I'm in a position where I'm nervous about it again because I've right. been away from it. And it's different music. It's not the music I played before. And so it's like, you know, building that building that confidence level back up, mm -hmm. uh, starting over with it. Sometimes it's that. It really is. It, it just, you know, and the, the thing is that every time, every time you face something, even if it's something that you've um, faced before and you're pushing through that comfort zone and pushing through the fear, even if you've done it a thousand times, there might be like a different facet of it mm -hmm. that you're dealing with, you know? And, and it, the, the brain is very, very weird in the way that it puts together calculations of fear mm -hmm. and, and, you know, things that you've experienced in the past and, and brings it up. And so the thing is realizing that like when it's real danger, your fear is expressing what is going on right then and there. When it is not real danger, your fear is expressing something that is ridiculous. Like, you know, you think of the lives, oh, people are going to think I'm stupid. You know, it's like we, we tend to turn certain things and make them relative to death. Mm -hmm. You know, so like that's why that's why the hilariously dark phrase, well, this is better than death came about yeah, amidst, exactly. amongst the rogue fam, because, um, you know, yeah, <laughs> it's a funny comparison. Because It is. Make. It is. <laughs> Yoshana said everything that's been said reminds me of a book I just finished. Ego is the enemy. It's really our egos that stop us from everything. Yeah. You know, Yoshana, I. I agree, and I, I have a really fun take on egos, and that might be something that we talk about in in a future uh, live stream, because there there is two sides of the ego, right? So you've got the ego that is like looking for uh, validation, validation, uh, you wanting to, you know, but, I, but I feel that the ego, that representation of you, there's, there's two sides to it. And when you are afraid of losing, right. Which means that, uh, you're, you're losing your non-stupidity, right. If I do this live stream, then I'm going to expose to the world that that I'm an idiot that I'm an idiot <laughs> if I show <laughs> off this art I'm going to expose to the world that I, essentially it that's how it is right because you either have people telling you that you're this you're that and so 
you form several different versions of yourself, right? And you gotta you gotta think of and this is veering off of the subject, but I'm gonna I'm gonna come back around, I promise. You gotta think of the different egos that you form, right? When the way that you behave maybe when you're around your parents versus the way you behave maybe when you're around certain friends, the way you behave when you're around you know, these people or those people or the way you behave when you go into a place where you're feeling um, out of place. And in my mind, it's like all of those things are different versions of these egos, of these ideas of this is what I am in reality and this is what I need to present. And then there is the creation, the ego that you create that is the one that makes you feel empowered, right? That is a much closer connection to who you are and identifying with that, but not letting it rule you, you know? So it is an interesting balance because you could argue, and I think I lean towards believing this, that a complete lack of ego, ego in the sense of like self-identity, um, yeah identifying as an individual rather than part of the greater whole right um could also stop you from expressing yourself creatively because it can turn into an existential crisis, crisis. yeah um so expressing your individuality without expectation perhaps yes and that's the, is the happy balance that's the biggest thing it's like all right so i'm gonna do this thing right and yeah. Oh, well, what ends up happening is you tie a lot of it into that expectation. So if I do this, I want it to be, you got to think about it this way. If I do this live stream, I don't want to look stupid, right? So what are you saying? Well, in this live stream, I better look smart. I better look expert like, right? Think of the pressure that you're putting on yourself in that sense of like now you better be everything that is whatever you think is opposite of looking stupid. And you are stupid, so it's going to be a lot of work. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's like you are just presenting. So it's letting go of the expectation, just yeah. saying, I'm going to do this thing. I don't know what direction this is going to go. The thing that I do know is that I'm going to allow myself to just move forward and make the best of this situation. Because I'm not a mind reader, right? So the stick man's not a mind reader either. You, you're going to look stupid. Oh, you know how to read the future now? You know how to, you know, you know how to tell the future? You, you, you it's, it's these ridiculous predictions that we make that is based on just complete bullshit. When in fact, you don't know if it's going to mess up. You don't know if you're going to do a live stream and it's going to be complete and utter crap or if you're going to do one it's going to be great you don't know if you're going to be miserable the entire time or if you're going to have fun the only thing you know is like okay whatever comes my way i know for a fact that i want to continue having fun yeah that's the magic ingredient shroy said humility yes yeah humility, humility. I find great comfort in putting myself out there, understanding that I'm not important. I'm just a person. And also the paradox there is as an individual, I am important. Yeah. No one else in the universe has my exact perspective. Exactly. And I like that paradox of unimportance and importance existing in the same space. It really is. Because it, it's one of those things where it's like, if I were to do these um, live pods, right? This podcast and immediately think to myself, well, everything that I say has to have value, right? What, what I, what I want to say has to be important. It has to bring value. It has to be blank, whatever life changing, blah, blah, blah. You know, it, I need to be able to inspire people. I need to be, able, if I did that to myself, you wouldn't be getting reality in these podcasts. You would be getting um, nervous scripted stuff. Like I would have to make sure that I was trying to bring a certain amount of information in a certain way that would make sense to everyone. Here's the caveat. It won't. Mm -mm. You might as well just be yourself and be willing to be stupid 
and be willing to just do it, just do it your way and have fun and say the things that you know, talk about the things that you feel confident talking about and, you know, be willing to be wrong. It's, it's just, it yeah, doesn't, totally. you know, and that's, that's really ultimately at the end of it, what, what really matters. It's like, you just having fun. My grandma always said, just be the sweet, kind girl you are and everyone will like you. And I love my grandma Lala a lot, but she was wrong. Right. <laughs> there are people that don't like me and don't like what I have to say. And that's okay. She was right about a lot of other stuff. Yeah. <laughs> like shoes. Like shoes. Yeah. Yeah. Get good shoes with good arch support. Sarah, Sarah Sarah said, I really think I want to do streams because I'm afraid to do streams. Stand up to the lion in the room. That's, that's well a, said, a great, Sarah. That's a great reason. Stand up to the lion yeah, in the room. Yeah, I love that. Uh, hi, Leslie. Hey, Leslie. Um, you are as movie stars to me, said Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> I said hi to Maya Angelou once and almost choked. I was so afraid. She said hi back. Yeah. I, you know, it's, it's so funny because you meet people, um, that have accomplished, you know, what maybe, incredible things, what you consider incredible things. Mm -hmm. And then you find out that they're just people, mm -hmm. you know, they're just people. And it's, it's the whole reason that like, um, I'll, I'll do a video where I talk about, you know, like everybody poos, everybody poos, mm -hmm. everybody takes a dump in the morning or in the afternoon or at some point during the day. If you're not pooing during the day, if it's then a you've good got, day, then you, yeah, then you've got, you've got <laughs> issues, but like the, the, we all go through that stick man period. We all have those moments. We all, we all, uh, you know, right now, you know, you look at me, my ears are red. That only happens when I get em embarrassed or like there's, you know, there's, there is something where, for example, right now, where I can't find the words to explain what it is that I want to say. Um, but it doesn't stop me because I honestly feel that that's all part of this journey. Um, I'm not always going to get it right. You're not always going to get it right. You're not always going to have that conversation and have all the information that you need. We're not meant to. Why no. would we even do this human thing if we had it all figured out? And when it, when it comes to live streams, artwork, putting yourself out there, all that stuff, it's like, you got, you're just you, you got to realize you're just you. And you're, you're the only way to figure out the paces is to go through the paces. You know, you don't, you don't know where to step until you step. Mm -hmm. It's like walking through a, you know, through a stream and there's like certain areas where it's deeper than other areas. And, you know, you're stepping and you're feeling around, but you don't know until you actually go in there and you do it. And that's, that's the only thing that builds the confidence, you know, and understanding the more you do it, the more you start to kind of learn the way that you're going to go. But the moment that you move uh, 30 inches to the left, now the entire thing has changed and it becomes scary again. And yeah, that's... the faster the current moves, the further along you get. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Hi, Kirkman. Uh, Kirkman says, your realness is special and one of the reasons we keep coming back don't ever change. Oh, well, oh, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Cameron said, I'm thinking of doing art YouTube videos in the probably distant future. I think I want to be Rafi-like and help others get started in the creative way. Well, that's awesome. I think that's awesome, Cameron. And you just, you know. Be Cameron-like, though. Yeah, of course. Be roguelike. Yes. We're all just rogues. It's true. <laughs> Clover said, everyone I looked up to and met, I learned they're just people and sometimes really not good people. Yeah, yeah. And and that's the thing. It's like I the one thing that I am always conscious of is I don't I I make sure that I don't put people on a pedestal because um, it doesn't mean that people aren't great people that I, we've met fantastic people, but you got to always hold that person on equal ground. 
and understand that whatever they do, you can do. Mm -hmm. And you might do it even better than them. And it's it's understanding that and, and remembering that, that sure, you've got the stick man that's telling you, well, you don't even know how to draw yet. You can't do blah, blah, blah. You know, you can't do hands. You can't do faces. <laughs> you suck at art, you know, or whatever. And it's like, it's, you got to realize that like, it's just crap. You know, it's just, it's all just crap in your head. That's uh, really doing whatever it takes to keep you from doing that thing that could scare you. You know, like people say, yeah, people say the words like, oh, that scares me to death. You I, know, it's like, you might yeah. as well be like, it, then it, immediately in your brain, you make that connection where it becomes death. And like, you are going to avoid it at all costs. Mm -hmm. uh, Kelly said, and if you step on a sticker bush, you know exactly where is the next step if you are going in that direction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, um, you know, combat the overwhelm by just doing your thing now. Start where you are. Make your mistakes. A lot of it's overwhelm, right? The blank canvas or the camera coming on or stepping on stage or even opening up the music program and there's no notes on any of the tracks and you just don't know where to start and it just feels overwhelming because you're trying to see the end of it before you've even begun oh that's brilliant and yeah you just have to yeah. lay down the first note or the first whatever that's all you got to do yeah because that's that's one of the biggest things too if you're like i am going to create a masterpiece right I, you've already that you've set up way too much pressure mm -hmm. on yourself Right. You've set up. That's why it, when I get into studio and I start working on anything, my whole thing is like, let's see what kind of beautiful piece of garbage I could create today, <laughs> you know, because it just takes the pressure away. When I set out to create a masterpiece for a client, I usually do, but it's usually like months of crying <laughs> and putting off <laughs> I think approaching it as like what let's see what kind of glorious piece of garbage I can yep. create today is much uh it's much less pressure. I would say that everything I create is a glorious piece of garbage. <laughs> I mean really, you know, and I love I I absolutely and completely love my art. I love my art and there are people out there that connect and love my art. But there are also people out there that think that it's a piece of garbage. So, you know, at the end of the day, it's like how, I'm not going to add any extra pressure by trying to get it right because there's nothing to get right. It's just the art that I create. Uh, it's just the live stream that I'm doing. It's just whatever it is that you're doing. It's just you. It's a part of what you're doing. You can't get it wrong. No, there legit is no right and wrong in the art world. Fight us on that. I dare you. Yeah, go ahead and fight us. <laughs> it's art. <laughs> Anybody out there, it's like, no, there's stuff that's right or wrong. Come I'd be at like, me, bro. Come at me. <laughs> Come at me. <laughs> Fucking do this right now. <laughs> um, Cameron said pressure to be something or pressure to live up to someone's or your own expectations are how people fail to, to yes. start. Yeah. Failure yes. to launch, right, is the pressure of of already worrying you're not going to be whatever. Yeah. Um, yes, you are beautiful and masterful and perfection, Sarah. Kelly said, when I got back into art, I decided to tackle what I had the hardest time with. I started with portraits. That's awesome, Kelly. Now I do whatever I want. Yes, indeed. Yeah. I'd love to see everyone on Zoom one day, said Leslie. Yeah. Most definitely. Cameron said, trying to start a masterpiece is a good way to never have courage to start it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the thing is like, when I like um, watch people that I admire creating, um, like Timbaland as a music producer. Um, one thing that I was really pleasantly surprised to see is that he's never setting out to create a masterpiece. He's like having fun a hundred percent of the time in the studio. Just playing. And that's really where the magic happens. I think just and that's that's the reality of it. When you see people, when people are very, very creative and you really connect with their art and you watch the way that they create, um, I would say the majority of, of the artists that, that I love their artwork, 
they're just playing. Mm-hmm. They're just playing, right? Um, some artists tend to take themselves very serious, and everything in the studio is a big struggle. And you know, and and it, they basically sit there and berate themselves, and they believe that like everything is going to be. Listen, sometimes things don't go the way that you want them to, right? But it's not one of those things where it's the end of the world. Like you just move forward from there, and you know. And I'm not telling anybody how to behave in their studio, but at at the same time, like you got to have fun. Life is way too short to be bringing drama into your artwork. And if you're having a really hard time getting started on these things that you love, then you really do have to question what it is that you're telling yourself about this thing. What have you made it way too way too important? Is it too monumental uh, of a project or if you get it wrong, then it then it means all these things that it doesn't mean. And it's no, just it's just play, just play. Mm-hmm. And if you have a wall of molasses to walk through, then maybe you just need to scream and run at your piece of art with tools in hand. Yeah. Like just or just put paint on your face, just, just run it. I'd be like, ah! <laughs> like, and when somebody's like, whoa, that's a weird abstract idea. It's, it's, you know, it's called have, getting started. It's like, have you ever heard of finger painting? This is called face painting. <laughs> I had to I had to begin and I didn't know how, so I attacked it with Can my you face. imagine filming that? That would be amazing. That would be an amazing video. That would be amazing. There you go. I'm doing a live stream. Perhaps you should. <laughs> <laughs> face painting with Rafi. <laughs> Everybody will think it's like face painting, like, you know, little kids. <laughs> face painting with Rafi. Oh, <laughs> that's yeah. good. I'll face paint with you. <laughs> um, Clover said my favorite way to paint is get this really big fluffy digital brush and just blob things till I see something come alive in the blobs. I love That's it. That's excellent. I love that. Even the masters made shit from time to time. Exactly, Shroy. You know, honestly, the masters made shit most of the time. And, and then they, they broke then all they, the rules, Then too. they polished they polished the turd, and then it looked amazing. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's... That's really the real. I mean, when you go through any of them and you look at the layers and the layers and how many times they had to change things up to get it to look like what it looks like. Yeah, that's it's one just of the things the course. Rafi's dad told me when I was starting off in jewelry. He said, it's going to look like shit till the final polish. Don't worry about it. And it's just <laughs> it, that's how it is with everything. That's yeah. how it is with everything. The a masterpiece is in the eye of the beholder. Indeed, I I start gestures most days in the art room to, to get, get out, out my timidity. My timidity. I love that, Cameron. I love that. I love that. Well, I think this was a great podcast, but I do want to bring in just a little thing because Blubber Duck um, asked a question. I know you've mentioned starting out working in a little corner, and he, what he's what there, Blubber Duck is talking about is. When I first started, I had a little corner of my dad's very cluttered garage. Mm-hmm. And uh, basically all my paint supplies were in a suitcase. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if you covered this, but how did you find motivation to drag out all that stuff? Uh, I currently live in a small place and all my art supplies have to hang out with, with Mr. Mr. Water, Water Heater. Heater. Uh, and it's a pain. Also, it's daunting thinking I had to put all this crap back at the end of my painting. I feel that it was out looking at me. I would be more motivated to poke it. Yeah. So that was one thing that I realized for sure um, is no matter how big the space is, is setting up a space where you are not dragging things in basically where um and this this goes for not like not wanting to get started either Mm -hmm. your art supplies and your supplies it should take one to two steps max for you to get started putting paint to canvas which means your paints are somewhere where you could easily get to them the canvas is out whatever it is that you're working on is out um And just finding a space, no matter where it is, even if you have a small apartment, my 
uh, one of my friends, uh, artist in, and he was a manager as well, but he was a working artist in Chicago. He had a, a, one of those very small studio apartments and in the living room on one wall, he had plastic taped to the wall and that's where he did all his painting. And no matter what, like that was just a studio. So if people came over, his studio was out. Um, he did not. And, and that's the thing. It's like a lot of people are used to like, okay, well, this is my art time. Mm -hmm. And then I put it away. Um, it's kind of like with us, our art studio was in our living room. Yeah. We had no living room. We just had an art studio. If there is any, any possible way that you can set it up where you don't have to put it away at the end, that's, that's really helpful. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it, it could just be that. It could be like, oh, well, you think you have to put it away because it's not an art studio designated space, but make it one. Yeah. You know, why not? Um, unless you, like, are living in a situation where there's other people in the house or kids that you don't want getting into it or pets or whatever. But even still, you can usually sequester off an area somewhere. Yeah. We've seen the Rogue Fam make workspaces inside of closets um on on tray tables that have permanent open status um in, in on kitchen tables in, in dining rooms in dining rooms in garages yeah uh we have some rogue fam that built uh bought one of those little sheds um that you can get like at hardware stores and converted that into a studio and basically it's it's figuring out figuring out a solution that works for you now understanding that it's going to keep evolving mm -hmm. it's going to keep changing Right. So like that little spot in the garage didn't work. And eventually what I did was bring the stuff inside into our bedroom. And so I had a corner where I painted in the bedroom. But then what I did was because I was set up at the flea market, I just set up a space mm -hmm. with my paint supplies and I would lock it up. Um, when we weren't there and yeah. then I would do painting there. And that was also the key to finding the motivation. Like in the beginning when the art supplies w did have to go away in a suitcase and they were in the garage, the motivation was that we signed ourselves up for shows and we didn't have any pieces. Yeah. So <laughs> the motivation was, well, I have to make stuff because so, I signed up for this show. So, yeah. So that's, you know, activate Dirt Pit Studios. It's going to happen. Yeah. I'm going to be out here sweating my butt off and working on stuff because we have a show uh, next weekend. And it was uncomfortable and scary as hell. It just yeah. was. Yeah. Um, but that's how we approached it because we were just extreme about so many of the things. I think because we were so extreme. I think we were extreme because we both knew that like we weren't going to launch this thing unless we were extreme about it. Because we were afraid. Mm -hmm. So it was like, you know what? I'm going to jump in with both feet. I'm just going to do this and I'm going to keep doing it and I'm going to keep doing it and I'm going to fall on my face and I'm going to keep doing it until I don't realize that I'm having to do this. You know, like I'm just going to keep doing it. And that's... That was the because I knew I had spent years talking myself out of it. You know, I'm not good enough, blah, 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 blah all that stuff. And so I think that that was one of the reasons that we were so extreme. Extreme. Extreme artists. Jenny said, life is short and so am I. So climb that ladder. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, Cameron said, get out your cyan, magenta, and yellow paint and get mixing colors on some paper. Less art supplies to mess with. That's a creative solution. Mm -hmm. I like that. Callie said, pick one spot that's two foot wide and put out a TV table. Leave it there and paint. Yeah. Clover said, I live in a 200 square foot studio with a full resin dice factory. Make stuff wherever you can. <laughs> exactly. Totally. I love that. <laughs> Lee said, ugh, or I don't want to put what I have in the upcoming shows. I have nothing to wear. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love it. And so we work through the things yep. one thing at a time and we'll, we get to where we're going eventually. Well, this, I think this was a great conversation and really at the end of the day, this is, this is the thing. Mm -hmm. This is the thing that kept me from really being where I am now um, for, for a long time, for the majority of my life. It was fear, you mm -hmm. know, and it was that fear of looking stupid. I, 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 when YouTube first came out, I wanted to post the, the videos of, uh, the movies that, you know, 
my friends and I were making and I posted no videos because I was too worried that people were going to hate it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was worried that people were going to think that I was stupid. I was worried that this and that. And honestly, you know, when I look back, I have no regrets for my life and where I am because everything led to where I am right now. But when I look back at that, I'm like, man, what a what a waste. Like that would have been so much fun. And even if people hated it, Hated at it. least I put it out there. Hated <laughs> it. At least I put it out there. So that so that's my thing. It's like just do it. Just do it. And and really, at the end of the day, that's one of the reasons. That, one of the many reasons that I end up doing what we what I do is because I'm like just do it. Because if you don't, you're gonna regret not doing it. And I would much rather just do it and you know have a have a moment where maybe i'm feeling stupid and just move on we went to our first gallery night ever with no table we needed a table we had no table and we didn't have one and we were like it'll work out or it won't whatever it won't. and we got there and somebody was willing to loan us a spare table that they had in the back of their truck they actually had three tables did they have three yeah we had three tables Oh yeah, we did have more than one table. Mm -hmm. We had three tables at our show. Our our setup looked amazing, considering that we brought no tables out or anything. Yeah. Yeah. So it'll work out. It'll work out. However, it works out. We've done other shows where like the stuff just was on the ground. Mm -hmm. I had paintings on the ground, which is hilarious because that show happened right after I had read some uh, article about how you should never put your paintings on the ground because people won't buy them and blah, blah. And like, I was like, I sold a bunch of paintings. You were the, the only ground. one selling paintings because they were on the ground because the wind speeds were <laughs> destroying everyone else's paintings. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the struggle is real, said Lee. Foldable table on things on wheels make it nice and convenient. Things yeah. on wheels, you guys. Yeah, things on Always wheels. Always things on wheels. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, I think that that was, that was great. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us and talking about... Fear! Fear, fear and art and <laughs> video stuff and all this stuff. Yeah, this was... This was great. This was a good conversation. I liked it very much. Yeah. And so thank you guys for being here and thank you for your input and stuff like that. I mean, it's so great being able to talk to a community of artists that are like legit badasses. So, you know, everything that you bring to this conversation is like, yeah. We love it. Yeah, we love it. And uh, and other than that, uh, I want to say thank you to everybody that is listening to this podcast in whatever platform it is that you're listening to this. And also, if you'd like to listen to more like this and it's your first time, go ahead and hit subscribe or follow or whatever it is that you need to um, touch on, touch on, click, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or that one. whatever in order to be able to follow us next time we go live. We do that a, a weekly. So, yeah. And that's it. That's the worst goodbye ending ever. You're welcome Good day. for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Say goodbye, Clee. Good day. All right. Adios. <laughs>